over 70, 80, 90. I see many people standing here. Um, today, uh, I'm going to present, to present Avascan research work. So, um, but first, I would like to say a few words because I think uh, I'll need them to say them to you. So, um, I, I feel we're at the verge of the latest trends in technology here. And um, Avalanche is supposed to be the winner takes it all in the crypto economy. So remember, you know, Goon said it earlier, but you know, I, I think it, and I think you all think this, we are here to stay and to work on this for the future. So uh, some of you may know me, some may not, but I think they most likely know the project I work on that is called Avascan. We are the prime explorer for Avalanche. 2022 is the year of subnets for Avalanche, and not only in my opinion, the ecosystem will grow insanely. You know, to understand how the subnets will be this year, we will need to understand how the subnets work and how they relate to Avalanche. But first, I need to tell you exactly what they are. So, as you can see in this image, there's the main net, which everyone is using, and the test net also called Fuji, that developers use to test their applications before launching on mainnet. So, um, each, each uh, subnet is basically a committee that validates the transactions of the blockchains in that subnet. You know, every validator can validate one or more subnets, but they must validate the primary network by default. Mainnet and Fuji are called networks. Networks Inside networks are subnets. Subnets validate blockchains. You know, this is, you know, this is, this is not easy. We took a lot of time to understand this. And since every validator needs to validate the primary network by default, the primary network is the one with the most, the most decentralized, the biggest one. And we know it, maybe some of you will know it, some, some will not, but it has three chains. That is P chain, X chain, and C chain. If you came to DeFi during Avalanche season six months ago, during, during Avalanche Rush, you most probably only interacted with C-Chain. While if you got AVAX in ICO or used it from, from the beginning, you most likely have interacted with all three chains at some point. You know, a blockchain is really diverse on Avalanche, can be really diverse on Avalanche. It's composed of three modules. The first one, as I said, is the subnet. A blockchain can be validated by one subnet that is composed of one, two, one thousand validators. You know, right now I think that we have about 1,400 validators on the primary network. The second one is a Genesis block that contains the code for the Coinbase at launch and some minting parameters. And then there's the third one that is the virtual machine, that is the operative code of the blockchain. And, and right now on Avalanche there are only two, Avalanche and Snowman++. You know, there are a lot of types of VMs right now running on mainnet. You have platform VM, AVM, EVM, um, timestamp VM, and so on. You know, many more can be created. You know, the word here is heterogeneity, because VMs are heterogeneous. They can be customized. And so this is a challenge, and I will explain you now. This is one of the thousands of emails that we received in the past 12 months from one of you, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and it said, okay, good morning, I transferred BNB 0.56 Rome BNB, I went to this address. Well, well of course, we, you know, we, we, <laughs> we deleted all the information. But, you know, I said, please, because I sent it wrong and I don't know what to do now, help me. So since Everscan, you know, our job is not just to show your transactions, is to show you, is to let users understand the complexity of the blockchain, you know, is to let the mainstream, not, I, I think we'll, maybe in 10 years we will be 4 million here, you know, we will not be 4,000. And so we will, under, we will want to understand how to, how to, you know, divulge this complexity to others. This is one another, this is another, and you know, it's, it's a lot. And since we received them, we, we said, okay, we need to establish a unit that does just this. Now, we call this forensic analysis. So we have a couple of people right now, and we hope to you know, build this team for a, for a long time, you know, and build it really, um, really big to actually understand what's on chain and how we can represent it. This is another one, and this is a tweet, very recent tweet. 
Someone that said, okay, Trader Joe USD is not supporting an anchor because the USD you buy on Trader Joe, David, if you're here, look at this, and it's not supported by the anchor protocol network. That means you cannot buy the native USD. So what happens? It happens that you may buy the same token, but in fact it's not. You know, if you go on, on Avascan, for example, you see that it's a different token address. But you know, it's not, a, it's not user experience, it's development. No, it's, it can't work like this. So the first question we need to do is, we, end, we, we, we ask ourselves was, what exactly is an address? So since VMs are heterogeneous, uh, we, and blockchains are validated by subnets, and there are you know, a, lot of comp a lot of modules here, we started with you know, asking ourselves what an address is. And we can say that an address has many different you know, implementations of itself. For example, when you look at Platform VM, the, the one behind P-Chain, as a UTXO transaction model, understand this transaction model and the consensus are two different layers, and a consensus snowman plus plus in a chain of blocks. Then we have AVM, that's the one behind X chain, that has a UTXO transaction model like the one on P-Chain, like the one on Bitcoin, but has an avalanche consensus in a DAG, so like IOTA. And then we have C-Chain, yeah, like, yeah, it's in EVM, so we have an accounting transaction model and a Snowman++ consensus in a chain of blocks. So we need to understand that are different in implementation of address. So for example, with, a with AVM and Platform VM, you know, the UTXO transaction model, we call it owners, because that is exactly what they are in the code. They are owners. Owners can spend UTXO, not addresses. You know? There are different types of owners. One of one, and it's a single address, one of n, M of N, you should see in the code. And we call account when we, we're referring to an account in the EVMs. This is the simplified, simplified version, it was really bigger than this, of our research work that we did to understand how addresses work and relate to each other. You know? um, we will publish this as well as a number of other definitions, other work that we did later today or in this week on our blog. So we'll you can dive on that later. So, for example, we said an address can be many things. So it can be an owner, it can be an account, it can be a smart contract when it's on, it, on, on its Ethereum. For example, who knows who was a Genesis set? Try to guess. What can be a Genesis set? Genesis, no one? The seed, the seed phrase? Mm, no, something like, well, yeah. The fo founded. Founded account. No. We, we call the... Set of parameters. No. Um, you know, how many of you got AVAX in ICO? Okay. You got them, you got them at launch, right? So we call the list of owners that got AVAX in ICO the Genesis set. Because it has really specific information conceptual information, economic information, that we can use to trace the money, how the money flows. For example, for the team of Abelabs or the foundation, we have this list, you can, you can um, uh, uh, we, yes, we, you can look on ecosystem or team on Avascan and you will see the list of addresses that have a tag for the Genesis set. We don't call it Genesis set on Avascan because we will need to explain it to you, but you can see it by simply going on ecosystem or team or airdrop or whatever. And this is one. Then an address can also, be, can also represent the treasury in a DAP or in a, in a whatever, in a, in, a, in a project. And then it can represent an exchange wallet, for example, Binance, CoinEx, Crypto.com, etc. The smart contract instead is a definition, is a, we have a, a technological classification. So a smart contract can be an NFT collection based on the ERC721 standard or it can be a factory that deploys new liquidity pool tokens, or a router that ensures DEX swaps happen efficiently on, on, on DEXs, or it can be a token based on the ERC20 standard. You know, looking at this, all the addresses, we, I decide, we decided to only focus on the token uh, today, because it would be really huge to talk about everything. So, we will talk about AVAX, no? The, AVAX is a 
really, you know, it fits really well in most of the concept that I'm going to tell you now. And um, we will follow AVEX's path as we virtually move it across subnets and blockchains and back and understand what it has become of it. You know, it's not simple. <laughs> so, AVEX is minted on P-Chain. Who did, you, you did know that? I did know that it was minted on X-Chain first, but then when I talked about the developers, they said, no, it's minted on P-Chain, so it's native there. It means that you should trust the organizer of this event, Ava Labs, that has done a good job in, development, in developing and deployment, in deploying it. So we, need, we say that a native token is one, is one where you only need to trust the, the protocol itself and the team or community or individual that developed it. So there's a direct connection between you and who actually developed the token. Then, let's say we, we take AVAX from P chain and we move it to, C, to X chain. So a lot of you that did this maybe in September, October 2020 when they first got their, their, um, their AVAX. Maybe some of them des delegated on P chain or started a validator. But maybe man, many of you, um, you know, moved it to X chain to then move it to Binance to sell it, to sell them. And so X chain, when it moves from P chain to X chain, is a bit different. Why is it a bit different? Because on X chain is actually liquid. You can actually exchange it. On P chain you cannot. So this is one big little difference. Then we move it from X chain to C chain. You see, the, the color has changed. We, we, this is how we identify, you know, the chains on Avascan, you know, and this is also slightly different because it's different liquid, you know, because you can trade um, tokens uh, from X chain or C chain, you can deposit them into centralized exchanges like crypto.com, Binance, and it has a certain kind of liquidity, so a certain kind of re redeemability. But you, when you move it C chain, to C chain, it can change a lot. Because when you move it to C-Chain, you can also interact with DeFi. So you will need a smart contract that will fit the AVAX native token into an ERC-20 standard. And that's what we call wrapped AVAX. So wrapped AVAX has changed name because it, is a, it, it has a new symbol and it also changed liquidity because AVAX is liquid on centralized exchanges, crypto.com, Binance, while Wrapped AVAX is liquid on decentralized exchanges. You know, we know bots have made on some arbitrage to, you know, make the price equal, but in the same exact time, they are not the same because the trades are actually different, you know? Then let's say we have wrapped AVAX on a, on C chain, on, let's say we, we are trading on Trader Joe, and then we want to move it to another chain because with the Avalanche Multiverse Incentive Program, a lot of subnets will be using a lot of money to incentivize users to move from C chain to their subnet. You know? We do it with an EVM bridge. One is the chain bridge, you know, um, from Chain Safe. And there are two types of bridges, actually. You, you, the software is the same, you know, but the concept and the actual structure is different because when you do, for example, a bridge between Avalanche and Ethereum, you're actually bridging two different networks. While if you bridge from, for example, a, um, from C-Chain to, for example, a Swimmer network from, from Krabada, you're actually uh, bridging in uh, two different subnets in the same network. So it's, it's not the same, you know? Take that into account. So, for example, let's say we bridge it to food chain, and then we, we have a, maybe a different symbol, surely a different contract address. We have a different liquidity, because we, I don't yet know cross, that, cross subnet access, so liquidity cannot now, right now be aggregated across subnets. Trader Joe, Pangolin, someone, maybe, will think about it. And uh, so, it, you know, it's, it can be, you know, different. This was a lot, right? So uh, let's, you know, redo it again one more time so uh, it, it's, it's clear. So on P chain, it's the baseline. On C chain, slight change, but we, we can say there's almost no change. When it's wrapped into wrapped AVAX, the symbol change and the liquidity changes because it's on two different markets. And then food, when, when we bridge it to food chain, we have actually everything. 
you also, there is also a trust change because you're trusting both the bridge manager and the validator of the subnet. There is a subset of validators, not only, not everyone, every, every, sub, every validator. So uh, we can also do another you know, game like this, another journey like this, but we will take another you know, token to, to do this. We will take the avalanche mascot. <laughs> <laughs> that is easy to, because you know it, it will not offend anyone or any kind of you know initiative, but you know we will demonstrate with this that it can re become really really complex. So let's say we deploy uh, Wolfy token as an ant avalanche native token on X chain because it's really easy to go to go from the avalanche go node. Then we move it to C chain and we wrapped in a C, a C20. It's called Wolfy the same. Then we make a, an agreement with a new subnet called DexNet that has a Dex chain that has some uh, 10x boost on farm rewards on their Dex, but only if you bridge from C chain to that subnet. So everyone will want to move there. Then when farm rewards end, because they end, <laughs> we make an agreement with another subnet called HODLnet, in the, uh, that has HODL chain, <laughs> yeah. I made a lot of references. <laughs> yeah. Hope you like it. Also, I have this reference. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, it's, the, it's the mascot here in, in the logo. <laughs> yeah, and I will have one T-shirt ready for you at the end of, uh, of the talk. So for the first one that makes a question. And so from, we, we bridge it, but we say, we want liquidity to be bridged only from Dex chain because we we don't like them anymore, <laughs> you know, and we don't want them from C chain. We don't want we want them from Dex chain. So we have a different token address, maybe a different name, and we have a different liquidity, also different price, maybe because there's a different market. Then we make an agreement with Trader Joe and say only those who come from HODL chain can have a 20x boost. We can do it because a different contract address, maybe a different symbol, there's a different liquidity, we, we can do it. But you know, we've come in circle and we have three different tokens. How messed is that? So please, please, if you haven't done this, bridge tokens via C chain. Make C chain your gateway. Because this is really hard to understand. You know, this is really the core concept. Remember the, the email that I showed you at, at the first, at the, at the beginning. But you know, even if you haven't done that, maybe if you're already in talks with doing a bridge or whatever, at Everscan we're already working on this. You know, uh, this is this is part of our process to to actually, uh, you know, see how data are you know being exchanged and then and then, then to show them so for example the first process of our, of our process the first step of our process is to actually you know try and get as much data from the avalanche core and core eth node core eth for evms node as possible so and when, when we do this we have we need to save these data as data structures in our databases and so we ask ourselves how is how can we actually structure this data and and, and then foremost how can we how, how is this data influencing other structures? Maybe we need to modify other structures as well. And how is this, you know, um, simplifying also the user experience? So is this, com you know, making complexity? And then we, we need to show this, you know, we need to show new features, new pages. You know, this is hard. We, we iterate really, you know, it seems like uh, we don't do, the, we don't do uh, a lot because we maybe uh, release a couple, once every couple of months or so, but we do a lot of work inside because 90% of our process is before the UI and then 10% is the UI because we, the work we do is not to show people, it's to index data, you know? We don't, we don't simply show the data we get from others. We have custom indexes. We call, these in, we, we call our indexes Norge. We are now in version 2.0 of Norge, and I will tell you about it right now. So the, the first step was Exchange. You know, Avalanche was launched in uh, September 2020, uh, 2021, and, uh, no, it was, yeah, 2020, and um, 
we, we needed to launch with Xchain. We, we actually launched on the September 1st, so 20 days before the launch of Avalanche. And um, we needed to find a way to actually you know, visualize all the, da all the data uh, on Xchain because it was a UTXO model in a DAG. So like, some like IOTA and some Bitcoin, so a mix of views. And then a couple of months later, we indexed C chain. C chain was hard because we, need, we needed to understand how our architecture, our new architecture, would add up to the current one. And um, we, we made the simplest choice. So we had a, a C chain indexer and a C chain model, an X, X, X chain model, and we just adapted it. So, for example, the, one, one of the most interesting you know, changes you see from uh, X chain to C chain is the fact that we just have from and to instead of inputs and output, outputs. But you know, we're iterate, we, we have your feedback. We have your feedback that you like familiarity for EVMs, and we will do it. And that's how I'm going to show you how. Um, but then a couple of months later, Ava Labs released an update to the Avalanche code node, and they said, OK, you can now wrap, wrap X chain. Uh, um, assets into ERC20 tokens on C chain, and so that was the first of our journey to understand. You know, what if we can actually aggregate tokens based on a subnet level and not on a blockchain level? You know, because as the Avalanche Foundation always says, the, the su a subnet is like a country. You have you can have a jurisdiction. You know, the set of validators represent a jurisdiction with custom rules. So it's like you have multiple, uh, multiple um, currencies, like in Italy or here. It's the same rules. So we need to aggregate tokens not based on the blockchain level, but on the subnet level. That's why we built the market cap page. Market cap page. So you see, for example, right now, we have Avalanche is the only native token on X because we don't have yet P chain, but you know, we'll arrive, and then. We will have all the information about X and X and C chain tokens, and we will we are building it to have more granular data and to also you know with the help of our forensics team to actually be on top of every you know new airdrop release or new lock tokens. This is really hard, guys. This is, you made you make a lot of things in your tokenomics, and we will need to understand it. So uh, this has consequences for for people to see, you know. And then the last piece of the puzzle, as I said, is P chain. You know, P chain, you know, is always uh, has already been indexed by Ava Labs, but um, we are also in, we are also in the, in the final steps of indexing it. And uh, it's the last piece of the puzzle, and it's really I think the most complex one to un to build it from a UX point of view because transactions on P chain are operations on the on the whole network. So, for example, when you create a new blockchain, you do it on P-Chain. When, when a subnet has a new validator, you do it on P-Chain, and its X effects are you know, scattered across all subnets or blockchains. So it's a really complicated way to, 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 to build it. But I can announce today that we are you know, almost ready to release P-Chain indexing phase one with transactions and blocks list. And we have also the first version of our in the owner in owner details page that is the implementation of address on pchain you know um, this has this has been a fantastic journey for us because we understood that with all this we could uh, build a multi subnet explorer not just a multi chain explorer because you know as i said before not, not aggregating tokens on a blockchain level, but on a subnet level. So that's why we'll be the, we'll, we're, we're starting from the address details page, that, that's the focus of the talk, and you know, building a new version that will be based on what you actually see in a lot of, the, of services that you use, dbank or um, whatever, whatever dashboard you're using. You will be able to connect with this with Web3, with your wallet, and you will be able to access all your data on, across all the subnets on Avalanche in one simple way, one, one page, it's just one page. And it will also be contextual. So, for example, if you have 
a, contra a smart contract, you will have the contract section. If you have an owner on P chain, you will have the staking details, well, validating or delegating. And if you have a, if the, if the, um, the address represents something like a treasury, a DEX, or a centralized exchange, or a token, or a bridge, for example, you will be able to access all the detailed information about that address. You know, multiple addresses can belong to the same structure. For example, let's say uh, Platypus Finance, let's say that this project that many, I think, use, has maybe a treasury, has team, team wallets, has airdrop wallets, has uh, liquidity pool addresses, smart contracts. So it has a lot of things. We need to, you know, we need to um, address all this in a simple way. We need to also um, let users understand how price moves based on liquidity pools. So, for example, if there is a token that is present on just two liquidity pools, its price is influenced in an upon-rated way in these pools. So, for example, maybe 10% in one pool and 90% in, in, in another. So we will do this and we will release this over, 20, uh, over this year and also next year because this is a multi-year project. You know, it, this is really, really big. And we will do this as we grew from seven people in... August 2020, first before Avalanche Rush, to 15 now, and aiming for 30 by end of year. So um, I think, I, I, I hope that this uh, has been a, you know, a, something that, you know, worked for you, something that you understood, something about bridge tokens and the subnets, and, you know, how it can, you know, increase complexity. And we are working with uh, the first few subnet deployers, as, uh, to, to release the first version of their indexing, their, their subnet uh, integration. And we will enable this through our scan token. Uh, many of you have asked us during the last 12 months, when scan, when scan. We can say that can arrive 2022, maybe early 2023, and will be, uh, you know, uh, valuable in um, having the partnership deals with the subnet teams. We are also, uh, you can also uh, help us uh, support our growth um, if you're a whale, a, a really big investor, and you can join the Wolves of Avax Investor Collective that have a, an exclusive you know, uh, path for, uh, for buying scan tokens first when, when they arrive. So um, I, I guess this is it, and I'm, I'm open to questions now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are actually seeing that Bitcoin with Taproot could allow uh, anonymous transactions. How will Avalanche Scan uh, uh, will do manage subnet that will allow that kind of things? Will it be you, you take so model, you, see, you mean? You mean Bitcoin? Yes. Um, the question is, uh, Bitcoin will uh, somehow allow uh, anonymous transaction with Taproot. Uh, we have other blockchains that allow anonymous transa transaction. Yeah. Uh, maybe there will be some subnet that will aim to have anonymous transaction. Yeah. Uh, how will Avascan manage those kind of anonymous well, things? Uh, yeah, uh, I can say that uh, there is basically no answer right now because um, you know, as I, for as far as I know, uh, the virtual machines that, it, that can power uh, new blockchains and so new subnets can only be plugins of EVMs, so forks of EVMs, so subnet EVM, etc. And they don't have privacy, uh, anonymity built in, just pseudonymity. And so uh, UTXO-like transaction model, uh, that will be a, di a different challenge for us and maybe a new, a new, a new talk about this because uh, this uh, is actually really, really hard, and uh, we can only infer how, how much you have spent as a UTXO to another address and how much is actually your, uh, act your, um, the, one, the one that you're returning to your wallet. So um, we, will, uh, we are actually thinking about uh, building some model to uh, understand and infer the, this, this kind of data like blockchain.com does. Uh, but, it, you know, uh, the thing is, they have six, seven, eight, nine years of experience, and we just have one and a half. So uh, it's, it, call, it all comes to that. Thank oh, you. One. Um, sorry, sorry, can you use this? Sorry, yeah. 
Uh, bridges, uh, I think there's a lot of bad energy around bridges. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you see uh, bridges between subnets as the only solution, or is something in the works with Avalabs to produce something native in? No, I, I, know, I know there is something. Uh, there is something in the roadmap that is like some native um, bridge, some native cross-communication protocol, something like that, yeah. Uh, but w what I think, this is just my point of view for the Av Avalabs from, um, you know, roadmap. What I think is that they are just, you know, beginning to onboard as many projects as possible. Where you will see many gaming subnets in this in the summit, and uh, I think this is just the way of, you know, let's onboard everyone. Let's understand that this is working really, really good, and then we will um, we will, uh, you know, have a, a some different model of trust. Do, do you think we'll, we'll have this massive amount of tokens? Like, like you just showed, one token is I specifically not. one concept, but we have about six different, yeah. which is pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, but uh, that's what, you know, th that's not the symbol. That's the token, you know, token address. And that's really the, the, the thing, because if you change the symbol, it can be a little bit easier, because you actually see the difference. But in the tweet I, I, I showed earlier, um, maybe I don't, but the UST that is called UST on Trader Joe and instead it's a different contract address because it's axler wrapped. So it's a token bri bridged from another um, bridge. And for example, any swap, every bridge has its own method of bridging tokens. So for example, the, the, one of the, uh, the, um, the reasons be because we, um, we are not indexing as many bridges as we, we just think, right now we just index the transaction for the Avalanche bridge, is that because every bridge has its own rules. So for example, uh, I know that AnySwap has a, you need to, when you deposit your token, you receive a receipt, and then that receipt is just bridged over the, to the other side, and then another receipt gets created, and then that receipt gets redeemed for another token. And it's actually four tokens, like something like that. And uh, maybe it's a little bit easier, but you know it's um, really complicated. You know, uh, I think the first the first way which we can simplify things is to uh, actually use the same bridge software. This is one of the few, and then we can um, yeah we can use a gateway chain. You know, I think C chain will offload when uh, when all the gaming subnets will will expand, and maybe. It will not offload because a lot of users will come into Avalanche in you know, the next million, the next two millions. But you know, um, we will have di there are different proportions. You know, uh, you know, right now we have one million transactions per day on on, on C chain. Maybe we will have one million, but the whole the overall will be 50 million. So, yeah, and yeah. have them set up nodes or, or like, how exactly are subnets created? So subnets are, uh, I, I'm not a technician here, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm not, de not a developer, but I can say, you know, some, some superficial things. You know, what can I say is that um, Ava Labs has done a really great job in uh, de developing some frameworks, some like, yeah, packages, that lets developers create a subnet in really, you know, us, us, two, three steps, and they basically deploy five node validat validator nodes and uh, five, one or two chains uh, based on EVM. So um, that is a, a certain trust model because you will need to add subnets, you will need to add validators for the subnet, uh, but uh, this is the, you know, the quickest way to onboard as many, as many users as possible and, but you know, you need to take that into account. You know, the thing, I think the, the main you know, um, takeaway from this is, remember that the redeemability of a token is not certain, you know? We, I must say this joke, we, we all know with Wonderland. And <laughs> but you know, uh, that's it. Tokens are not redeemable as, as much as we'd like to. So we need to be careful about this. And we as Avascan, we need to be careful about how we show this because we have a, 
you know, a duty to you know, show users the best information possible. Hellish journey of a hellish tokens hellish journey um, yeah. <laughs> description. Yeah. If if you think as let's say we think about the next one million, two million people that are gonna yeah. join on to Avalanche, that they're just gonna get destroyed by this, and this is gonna lead That's, to a shitty experience, and then they're yeah. gonna say, "Wow, I'm, I I don't know how to think and deal with all this subnet shit. I'm just rather just sit on something simple." Yeah, yeah. This is uh, you know. Uh, as as Gun said uh, in the in the remarks, uh, a lot of people will say very different things, and it, of course the uh, subnet teams will be you know very eager to let people you know on board, and uh, but they are not, I think, and that's why that's why we're talking with all of them. We're talking with a lot of subnet teams. We're trying to advise them on how to because we it's like. Um, I think Aviscan is, is in a better position to advise about this because we work on the visualization of things. So we, so we have a lot of emails about, about to users that, that think that we are Avalanche. No, we're not Avalanche. We're an independent team that develops Avascan that is on a block transport. Yeah, we have, a, we have a grant with the Avalanche Foundation, but you know, we're an independent team and users actually uh, you know, email us because they think that's you know the, the site the website our website is the source of their problems so what we will do is when you have no let's say this um, okay this page you have right now it's the bridge but you can have the token okay so for, for the token we will aggregate all the information about the different smart contract addresses of the same token. So, for example, if UST has, has seven types of uh, tokens addresses across all subnets, we will show all of them, and we will show what's the different token addresses, so you can you know know you know which is which. This will be a lot of you know this will be huge because this will last months to do because we have a similar function, a similar feature that is called similar tokens. You, you, when you look for USDT, for example, we list in the, uh, I, I, don't, I don't yet remember, we have a section, the token details page, that um, shows you the tokens that are similar, like with the same name or that include the name. But this is not a machine learning method. We do it with people because even machines can, you know, can uh, um, f mistake one token for another. So we do it because we need to be sure that we're doing the right thing. And this has consequences because, for example, yeah, for example, um, uh, was three days ago, uh, I, follow, I followed the DeFi Pulse news, uh, newsletter, and they said, yeah, um, this um, platform on Avalanche has really, really great API, APYs, uh, or it was, yeah, you need to use uh, USDC, but you need to use USDC, not USDC.e. So you will need to, they, they said a thing that, they said something that was, I was like, uh, you know, um, on, on, on the floor, because they said, uh, you need to uh, redeem your tokens on, you need to bridge them back to Ethereum, redeem them on the Circle website, and then you can deploy them, you can uh, mint them on, on Avalanche. Well, you can simply go to, to Trader Joe or another DEX and you can simply swap. I mean, the problem is real. And that's why, oh, I think, okay, yeah, this is yours. Yeah, that's why, I, I remember, oh yeah. I, I did answer your question? Okay, yeah. I'm not sure if you're the right person to ask about this, but yeah. you know, I'm really curious about subnets and shared security because that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. because the gas token ends up being, the, uh, for, for, for the subnet, the gas token is the underlying. And then I know there's something about prime validators and they'll yeah. use AVAX and stake it and that's how you get shared network security. But I, I, I think there's, I, yes. I just have a lot of questions around that. Yes, you know, um, as I said, the primary network is the biggest one, but it's a subnet, you know, you need to understand the subnets are on the same level, but the primary network is as an exception that makes it the biggest one in any case. So uh, actually a, a new subnet can 
surely have a subset of validators that is less than this, the primary network. So you will need to take that into account. But you know, as um, for how the protocol works and uh, how the consensus model, how the, the, the stake is, um, is, uh, is working across the network, I think that, you know, it's a fairly, fairly trusted model. Uh, but, you know, I can't, you know, I can't go on further because, you know, it's uh, one subnet can deploy $1 million in AVAX in, uh, in subnet stake, in, uh, yeah, subnet by the stake, uh, validating also the primary network, but it can be a malicious actor, but we won't know this. So, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a bridge to, to the next phase, yeah. Any, any more questions? Okay. Thank you so much, guys. And follow our Twitter. Our Twitter, so uh, you will be updated when the, when the blog post is online, later today or tomorrow. Thank you so much.